I'm Greg Ritalik of the Museum of Natural and Cultural History at the University of Oregon, and we're here at this wonderful mammoth trackway site, which we discovered here in Fossil Lake, Oregon, not too far from Christmas Valley. Uh, it's a famous place for fossils, of course, it's called Fossil Lake, but this is the first time anybody ever found any trackways, which is fantastic for us because you can learn a lot about life in the past from fossils, but what you learn from trackways is behavior. And this one really is exceptional. We think we have a big matriarch running right through here. Those are the most obvious ones. We think we have juveniles. We think we have crisscrossing trails. We think we have an area where a whole herd trampled through where it's actually hard to see the individual footprints. So we're learning about the Columbian mammoth, an extinct proboscidean that roamed North America uh, about 100,000 years ago. We know that age from the dating of the associated volcanic tufts. This is a trackway of a big animal. It's not actually the trackway or the print itself, it's an undertrack. And this was a heavy animal enough to create a kind of a micro seism in the soil beneath, which gives you this concentric pattern uh, to it. We like to think of this as the grand matriarch of the herd of Colombian mammoth that strolled through here about 100,000 years ago. I'm Brent Breithaupt. I'm the Regional Paleontologist for the Bureau of Land Management out of the Wyoming State Office. Nefra Matthews, my colleague down from the National Operations Center, and myself have been documenting dinosaur tracks and other fossil footprints in the Rocky Mountain West and throughout North America since 1998. We are invited here by Greg Metallic from the University of Oregon to help with the documentation of a brand new mammoth track site. And by using photogrammetry, the ability to create digital models using our cameras, we're able to collect the most extensive data set that we possibly can for this site. We can get sub-millimeter level accuracy just from our camera and create digital elevation models that we can use for measurement and mapping and work with this, the researchers not only to do the scientific interpretation, but also to help with the local offices in the BLM for management of the site. Hello, I'm Nefra Matthews and I work for the Bureau of Land Management National Operations Center Division of Resource Services Geospatial Section. And my fellow photogrammeter and paleontologist Brent Breitalp and I are here documenting this amazing track site um, in conjunction with Greg Ritalik and the University of Oregon Museum. We were invited by Dr. Ritalik to come and help do three-dimensional documentation and image mosaic creation of this surface, which is what we've been doing this week. And we were able to make a half millimeter level three-dimensional model from the surface from which Dr. Ritalik produced a map of the different trackways on the surface. Uh, my name is Adrian Bros. Uh, I'm a graduate student. I uh, just finished up my master's down at uh, Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo, California, uh, studying soil microbiology and uh, soil chemistry. And I'll be starting a program in the fall with uh, Dr. Greg Ritalik at the University of Oregon in the Earth Science Department, uh, focused on studying paleosols. All right, uh, what we have here is a moderately developed paleosol. Uh, it's in a palestrine lake bed type depositional setting. Uh, in a zone of deflation. And what we have here in particular is uh, relative to our mammoth trackway excavation because it informs us on the soil development and stratigraphy uh, both at the time of the mammal trackway uh, impressions and also uh, long before that. Uh, so we can get an idea of what the uh, nature of the soil was before and after our trackway was deposited. By systematically documenting this site, by taking stereo photographs of the entire surface, generally at about a meter or two meters above the surface, we are able to get sub-millimeter accuracy. We're able to get a sense of what it was like when the animal stepped into the ground and left a footprint. Now we're looking at footprints that are 100,000 years old. So we have to imagine a time when we had mammoths, not one, but a herd of mammoths running through this area. Photogrammetry allows us to capture this data in a three-dimensional uh, format. It allows us to take a look at these tracks and then come up with wonderful interpretations about the life and times of the animals that went through here. And from a BLM perspective, these are BLM 
lands. These are public lands. These are public resources. And this is a story that we want to share with the public. We want to tell them about these animals that lived here and why they're important to the people that live in Oregon and the people that live around the United States. What people don't realize about Oregon is that we have a fantastic fossil record here that takes us way back into deep time. And what our museum is about is legacy, is about preserving these things for Oregonians. We're now the official state paleontological collection for the state, and we preserve this material in perpetuity. We have fossils from this location that were collected by Thomas Condon in 1870, and the research is going on continuously through to the present. Uh, most of our mission is to conserve fossil materials so that future scientists can ask new questions and find out new things about the past. Nefer and I have been fortunate for the last 20 years to be able to travel around the country to help researchers working on BLM public lands, to help interpret the sites, to help document the sites in state-of-the-art techniques. Photogrammetry, the technique that we use, is state-of-the-art. It's non-invasive. We don't have to pour anything on the surface. We don't have to even touch the surface. We just take the photographs, and photographs are a way to capture the data. And capturing this data in a digital format and creating 3D models from this, from this data allows us to great, get a great understanding of these three-dimensional objects, of these footprints, not just the size and the shape, but also the depth. We get an idea of the impact, how the forces transmitted through the surface to leave the tracks that we see now. And then we use this information integrated with a variety of other documentation techniques that are done on the surface to come up with our interpretations about these animals that lived here. So this is a technique that the BLM has fostered, has continued, has really stimulated, not only throughout the country, but throughout the world. And now photogrammetry, a technique that pretty much in 1998 was uh, not done by very many researchers, is now done around the world. It is the way to collect this data, especially for dinosaur footprints, but for a lot of other fossils as well. At the museum, which is the Museum of Natural and Cultural History, we're very used to working with the BLM on the archaeological side. Um, and we've had long, helpful relationships with the BLM in permitting for archaeological excavations. We've also worked with the Native American tribes of Oregon. Um, this is uh, the first time I've worked with them on the paleontological side, and I must say it's been really quite painless and enjoyable. We've had a lot of help with expertise, uh, and uh, through the permitting process, it's been really very good. Uh, the BLM has also helped us financially because we are a BLM-approved repository. So the BLM has donated cabinets and other resources so that these fossils are properly curated. And it's not easy to become a BLM repository, so we worked hard to upgrade our storage, to upgrade our pest control, to upgrade our climate control, and get a storage that'll keep these fossils pretty much forever.